uh, we're, we're right you know, on schedule. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Um, you know, to talk to what Debbie just said and to talk to what Sam said earlier, what we're actually talking about, and I hate to break it down this way, but there's no other way to say it. Know your audience. You really got to know your audience. A school presentation is not the same thing as a presentation to a, a, a group of judges or the courts or the court liaison. It's not the same as going to your uh, government officials offices that are representing the community, you know, and uh, going to a recovery treatment facility or, you know, going to a faith faith organization. PR and our message uh, and how it's presented to those groups is very different in presentation. You know, the message is the same, it's the presentation. And that comes down to what we need to understand, whether you have purple hair or you have a ponytail going down the, your back, whether you have a beard or a full sleeve of tattoos up to your neck, you know, diversity is our strength. If we can get our committees open to and attracting individuals into service work, regardless of their age, regardless of their race, you know, their belief systems across the board, get them all involved because we want to reach the suffering addict, regardless of where they are. You know, this has been a great, you know, presentation from Brooklyn. I came on a little late and I just am so happy to be part of this journey. I'm gonna turn it back over to Alvina because we're coming up on our next section. Thank you very much, Alvina, for you know letting me know that I could join in on this. And I look forward to being part of as we continue this journey into making our communities more aware of who we are, what we do and how we can be found. Yeah, we love you, Jim. Western New York, a vital member of the Northeast Zona Forum. PR. Thank you, Brooklyn. So, thank you, at, at this time, thank you, Brooklyn. Yes, at this time, I'm going to introduce our next moderator. Uh, and and this person, um, uh, I've learned a lot also uh, about public information, public relations. And with that, I'm going to give you Peter H. to introduce our next segment. Hello everyone, I'm Peter and I'm a grateful recovering addict. My background is I've been doing public information for over 30 years. I sat on World PI and I helped write the public information handbook, which we euphemistically call the pig, the PI guide. Um, that's a joke, but people at North didn't like it. Um, I have extensive background at region, area, and world in PI. Um, I'm glad to see so many people from so far away. Uh, my job is to introduce our next presenter, Bob W., who's a friend of mine and who I've known for more than three decades. Um, one of the most important things I'll say about Bob is He's one of the most dedicated and committed people to NA service <coughs> that I know. And I know a lot of people all over the planet. And Bob is up there as one of the most dedicated and committed. Bob has done area public information in Manhattan area before it was split, before it became two areas. Bob has been involved in regional H&I, Bob has a history. He did, I think, six years as the regional delegate for the Greater New York Region and the regional delegate alternate. Bob was very involved in getting our presentation to professionals during the regional convention in 2019. I attended. It came off without a hitch. It was tremendous. So all I can say is, you know, Bob is a friend and he does a lot of service. And at the end of his commitment, he ran for the public relations chairperson for the greater New York region. And that's his commitment now. And he's starting to take off. And in closing, before I present Bob, I'll say that events like this remind me that even though we call it public relations, 
public information is still alive and well, and we're getting back on track. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Bob W. I feel with that introduction, I, I'm, I'm coming out to like defend the, the world boxing title. <laughs> What can I say, Peter? Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Wilvina, uh, Manhattan area, uh, Northeast Zone, uh, the greater New York region, uh, you know, all the people that I'm involved with directly, indirectly in, in service. I got clean in 1983. So uh, I've been around a long time. My first sponsor, his name was Frankie G. He was a pioneer of Narcotics Anonymous recovery, and he was involved with public information. And, and back in those days, the way it worked was, <laughs> if your sponsor was involved with public information, you were involved in public information. He, I believe, was either the first or second public uh, information chair people on the regional level, and I was the second one. So you know, it was kind of like whatever your sponsor did, you know, you just filled his shoes when he moved on to something else. So that was my beginning. Um, one of the things that I want to say, so I'm here today to speak about a thing called a professional's presentation, which uh, there's 69 people on here. I'm guessing that even, I don't really know a lot, a lot about public information or public relations, like compared to a lot of people here. I don't uh, pose to be a, like a super knowledgeable member, but I do have some specific knowledge. And one of the things specifically I know about is this thing called uh, professionals presentation. So to just tell you a little bit about that journey, I don't know how many people here, I wish we were in an interactive thing where I could say, raise your hand, let me know. I'm guessing that not many people here have been involved in professional presentations, even if they have extensive, even massive experience in public information slash public relations. I know there are a couple of people here who have done these things. Wilvina, definitely. Uh, Adam from Connecticut. Peter helped me out. So there's some people here who know. So one of the things, so when this thing first started out, it was connected to the Impossible Dream Convention. There was a convention coming up. I was the regional delegate for the greater New York region. I have traveled all around the world, exposing myself to various service symposiums and uh, service conventions. So I had this sort of casual exposure to this thing called the professional's presentation. So as a result of that, when the convention came up, I had this idea, what a great opportunity. We have a hotel lined up in Manhattan, a super high profile uh, location. And why don't we use this as an opportunity to kind of get it out there that NA is a big thing and uh, to try to carry the message to uh, beyond the scope of the typical public information. So a lot of people didn't even know what I was talking about because most people had never uh, heard about this thing called a professional's presentation. And, and some people, for example, would say, well, but I'm involved with public information. I'm doing presentations to professionals all the time. Well, that's not what a professional's presentation is. A professional's presentation is when professionals, people outside of Narcotics Anonymous are actually the primary speakers and they speak about their relationship with a cooperative, non-affiliated relationship with Narcotics Anonymous. So just to tell you, so that is the part that most people don't have much experience with, even if they've been involved with public information slash public relations. So I had first seen this at the European delegates meeting, the EDM in, in Europe. And then I also went to the Florida Service Symposium, which is a big Northeast or Eastern Coast uh, service thing. And they had a, a service symposium and they had this thing called the professional's presentation. 
New York is a really super ideal place for a professional's presentation because there are hundreds of thousands of people working in occupations which are connected directly or indirectly to people we want to carry our message to. So like those types of people would be people in mental health, the courts, prisons, um, health and hygiene, human resources, all the different uh, employee assistance programs, probations. I mean, there's just tens of thousands of people who have contact with addicts who we never really get to contact those people. But if we get these people on board, these professionals, we can actually use them as a way to kind of carry our message in a broader way. So a typical professional's presentation involves, I broke it down to basically like three parts. One, there's an introduction. At the Greater New York Regional Impossible Dream Convention, the introduction was done by NA World Services. Uh, we had a person who does public information for NA World Services. And, and that opening part is basically a PowerPoint presentation in which we explain what uh, NA is about. And then um, they do statistical things. They do things where a global fellowship, we do things about uh, diversity, all that sort of stuff, which kind of gives people an impression, wow, NA is a really big thing because we are a really big thing. And um, so that, that, that's the introduction part. The second part, which is sort of the primary part of a professional's presentation, is, is where you have a panel of professionals. At the Greater New York Regional Convention, we had some really like heavy hitters in uh, various fields that have contact with addicts. We had a person, we had the director of volunteer services for the state prisons. This is the the director over the directors of all the individual prisons. So this person has like a job which covers almost all of New York state involving volunteer services. We had Donna Westhoven, who is the New Jersey uh, statewide drug court manager. This is a huge program involving thousands and thousands of people who are getting mandated to attend NA meetings in Jersey. We also have, uh, we had a woman, her name, well, not her name wasn't really important at this, at this thing here, but she was the director of Hazleton, New York City, and which has, you know, Hazleton, Betty Ford. I mean, it's sort of a nationally recognized uh, drug treatment uh, program. So the thing that sort of is like the difference between your typical uh, public information presentation and a a, a professional's presentation is that when NA members speak about their uh, experience in public information, most of the time they're talking about uh, NA and, and they're talking maybe about their personal experience or they're talking about statistics in, in, in um, you know, that NA has compiled about the makeup of our membership and stuff like that. But when professionals speak about Narcotics Anonymous and how they interface with Narcotics Anonymous, it's a different language. You know, one of the things that Jim L said, like at the very end, which, you know, really resonated with me and is the thing to, to really remember about public information slash public relations is know your audience. I'm a very sort of suspicious person by uh, nature. So say for example, it, an NA member is, is sharing about their experience about, you know, recovery or the value of Narcotics Anonymous to a professional. Well, of course, in my head, the professional is thinking somewhat like, well, of course, this person loves NA. NA saved their lives, but is NA really a good thing? There's kind of like a, a certain dynamic that occurs when an NA member is sharing about NA and there's a completely different dynamic that occurs when somebody like the director of Hazleton says, you know what, we use NA meetings too. We endorse NA meetings to our clients. 
that type of message resonates with professionals in a way that's completely different in how people hear things. So it, it's something like, as, as Jim said, the thing about knowing your audience, in a million years, there's a certain type of message that a professional who has a collaborative inf uh, connection to Narcotics Anonymous, there's a certain way that they can explain how NA works in a manner that an NA member would be really difficult to do, almost impossible. There's sort of like a, um, you know, like an NA, we say this thing about the therapeutic value of one addict helping another. The reason that we say that is because there's a certain thing about the way an addict speaks to another addict, which creates an identification that really is without parallel. So it's the same thing, like in public information, public relations, part of it in some ways, I hate to use the word, but in, in a certain way, there's kind of like a marketing aspect to public information. I mean, we're a program of attraction, but how do we create the attraction? Well, in cases, NA and, and any 12-step fellowship since the beginning of time has really been dependent on these things where people who know the value of what we have to offer to sick and suffering addicts, those people have in some ways, we don't seek endorsements, we don't seek affiliations, but when people who have utilized what we have to offer, and many people know the value of what we have to offer, whether that person be a member of the clergy, whether that person be the director of a rehab, whether that person be uh, an, uh, a police sergeant who handed a meeting list to uh, you know somebody who got you know is in like lockup down at the tombs or something like that, whatever it may be. So there's a special kind of relationship which can get developed through these professionals' presentations, which just cannot happen through your typical public information thing. It's, it's kind of like a distinct thing. So in the process of this, I mean, of course, one of the most important things in the development of these things is that whoever is doing this is that they be a trusted member. So I was elected you know, to kind of spearhead this thing. So I was a single point of accountability. I got help. Wilvina was a big help in this thing. Uh, the, some people from the Northeast Zonal Forum also pitched in and helped out. And this thing was done under an ad hoc committee as opposed to a, uh, a standing committee. So it was like we had a task, we did it, and then the the ad hoc committee dispersed and everything. And it, it was like, you know, in some ways it, it was a huge success, but like with all successes, there's some other things that, you know, you know, in the critique of it or looking at it afterwards, I would say one of the challenges with the thing about professionals presentations is professional presentation is public relations. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is, is so you can have a huge successful event and have a hundred professionals in really high positions in their fields come and they can hear the message and, and they can become enthusiastic about what Narcotics Anonymous is about, but how do you follow up on it? So, you know, somebody else said something earlier in the day, like when you do these kind of events, there is somewhat an implied promise or commitment that somehow we're going to follow up with them. That to me is how I distinguish like public information from public relations. Public information to me, in my head, most of the time means somebody asks for information, you supply it, and the commitment has been fulfilled. With public relations, there's a little bit more of an expectation that we develop an ongoing relationship with these people. So if you get the ear of somebody who's involved with drug court, it's not about just letting them know and then walking away. So these events do create work. They create work on an ongoing basis. Do you follow up with the person who's the director of drug court? 
Do you ask her how things are going and how can we help? I mean, it's the same thing with, uh, you know, if you engage somebody from the Department of Corrections at a really high level, and then they say, well, can you do something for us? And then you can't do it. So, I mean, it has to be thought out before uh, these things are done. Is I set my own timer. I could go on and say a lot of things about this. They're basically a professional's uh, presentation is a one-time event in a way, but they create in some ways, they create a commitment to those people who go to those things, who show an interest. Now you have to follow up on them or it can make us look not great. It's like, wow, they reached out to us. Then we said we needed something. And then they say, well, we can't do anything. Like I said, it, I, I learned about this on the fly. I had a lot of help. I wasn't alone. Uh, I had a great committee and, and it, was, it was a huge success, but the follow-up is difficult. And uh, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. If you have a rocking committee with a lot of people who are willing to put in time and effort, not just for the event, but in the follow-up, then these are the type of events that really uh, can connect and, and contact addicts in a way that, you know, one-on-one -on -one PI could just never do because the scope of these types of contacts is really, really big. Uh, with that, I mean, I ran out my time. I don't know if I said anything that people could identify with, but uh, uh, we'll take questions. Hey, this is Jim L from Western New York. Um, thank you very much, Bob, for differentiating uh, what it means to have uh, professionals do a presentation. And we have one that is being worked on currently, and we're developing one here in Western New York uh, in the near future. It might even actually be during PR week, which is uh, a goal, you know, hopefully it's achieved. But one of the things I found, uh, it, the language that we use, as you said, is very important. And many of us bring a vast array of experience to uh, the fellowship and the work that we do uh, in NA when we talk about service work. And we can't dismiss our, our life outside the fellowship. You know, we're talking about you know, planning, preparation, organization. And when it comes right down to it, you know, we can't just drop in, say hi, here's the information and go on and think the job is done. We're talking next steps, you know. And I look at this group of people and I see a wealth of resources. The resources here that can be tapped to do such a thing. Because I may know individuals in my immediate location but to bring professionals from outside my community that can speak to what it is to be related with and connected to na makes a difference you know everything i do in my professional job requires me to use the people that we provide the services to and we use those individuals to actually do presentations to individuals that would be seeking our service it's the best way to make us attractive. And thank you once again, Bob, for differentiating what it is to do a professional presentation, you know, of professionals coming together. Okay, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna up, operate the uh, principle of flexibility a little bit. Peter has his hand up and Denise M from Westchester. Peter Gray for Covering Attic. Just to uh, tag on to what was just said, you know, knowing your audience is really important, but appropriate attire is also good. I'm not wearing a suit and tie if I'm going into professionals in the uh, in uh, judicial. And I'm not wearing a suit and tie if I'm going to a school. If I'm going to a bunch of professionals in the field of addiction, I'm probably going to wear a suit and tie or close to it. So you need to wear appropriate attire when you go to do these types of presentations or encourage professionals to speak for us 
and their relationship with NA. So it's very important that we represent NA appropriately in the types of venues we choose to participate in or to create. Thanks, Thanks Peter. All right, Denise M has her hand up. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, Bob has said the follow-up is difficult after professional presentation. And I said it must be done. So when you say follow-up, what I follow, say if I did one, what I follow up with uh, emails, letters, or phone calls? That's a that's a great question. And and it's really uh, you know all all of the above, depending on uh, the nature of the re the relationship with the the committee mm -hmm. and, and and the person that you're you're speaking to. I mean, most people today is uh, email. Like if I was going to do a, a brief kind of casual like touch base, I would use email. Yet if I was going to if I was going to be asking for something specific, or if I had a specific question to to the person who I wanted to communicate with, that I would I would try to do through the phone because those are the most intimate contacts, phone contacts, or uh, even going to visit the person because we did actually you know in the vetting process with the people who would be speaking, we wanted to really know that we were understanding one another about what our roles were in, in this presentation. And those people we visited and we had a, a very tight contact with those people. So it all depends on, on you know, the nature of the communication. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Okay, so if you if you just uh, zoomed into this meeting, we're concluding the the segment portion on uh, professional roundtables and professional presentations. And I know that we also have um, Adam M in here from Connecticut. I don't know if he wants to just weigh in. I know Pro Connecticut Region has done professional presentations as well. Uh, I mean, he may or he may not want to just weigh in in the last two minutes before we go into the next segment. Okay, so any questions? Uh, Bob, put your information in the chat. Yeah, I was just saying one question that came up in, in the chat. So is it possible to get slides that you use in presentations to professionals? We have some that we can provide. Uh, they were the ones we used for our service in prisons. We used uh, Jane Nichols uh, from NAWS is the person who did the introduction presentation part of ours. And, and they had, NA World Services had a very specific PowerPoint that they wanted to use at the presentation, but we did integrate uh, some local uh, things that, you know, kind of reflected. So not only did we reflect the global nature of NA, but we did put some uh, local things in to give it local flavor. Uh, so Jane might be the person to reach out to for that, or will be. Well, Wiener is, is like a wealth of PowerPoints and sources. So uh, she, she might also be able to provide that for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. All right. And um, 